I think that probably all of you are aware that colon cancer is a real, uh, important, relevant problem all over the world, but especially in, in Western countries. Uh, it, it is estimated that uh, every year more than 200,000 individuals die because of colon cancer. That uh, There is a one figure that is quite impressive, that it represented by one death every three minutes. And there are some estimations for the uh, from the International Agency for Research on Cancer that it's expected that this figure is going to increase by 12% uh, by the year 2020. But uh, even though these figures represent that the colon cancer is a, is a huge health uh, problem, the colon cancer has some characteristics that make this uh, lesion uh, uh, preventable. That means that we have, the, uh, we know the natural history of this disease, and we, need, we know that most of the colon cancer start with a polyp, with an adenoma, and that this process is quite long, takes uh, approximately 10 years. That means that we have a window that we can use to prevent or to early detect uh, the, this cancer. Th that is a slide that summarizes a little bit the, 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 the figures uh, of colon cancer uh, incidents and uh, uh, mortality all over Europe. And you can see that there is a wide range, but uh, I just want to uh, bring your attention that in most of the countries, colon cancer represents between 10 and 15 percent of all uh, uh, cancer uh, that they are identified in, in each country. Uh, we, we know for sure that at that moment we have uh, many colorectal cancer screening approaches that uh, Professor Haroran is going to talk about. And both of them are effective and cost effective in this population that we call average risk, that are men and women aged uh, 50 or older. And most of the, the, the tests that we are using are either stool tests, FOPT, FIT, or structural examination like sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy. And that these uh, approaches are uh, used to detect cancer and also the premalignant lesion that I mentioned uh, before. But even though that we are using these uh, approaches in many, many countries uh, all over Europe, there is still there are some concern that the compliance with this test, the uptake of colon cancer screening program is still too low. Uh, that, that is very important in a population-based setting because we, we consider that the, the, the success of any screening program depends on the efficacy of the test, compliant, and also the accessibility. I mean that it, it is not enough that a test is very sensitive. We need that uh, people com uh, comply with, the, with the, the, the proposal and that everyone could, uh, has access to this uh, test. That is the ideal characteristics of a test for a colorectal cancer screening, it should be a very sensitive test for detect early cancer, precursor lesion, the, the, uh, the adenoma, and that it worked per, uh, exactly the, uh, in the similar way in the right and in the left uh, colon. But at the same time, we need uh, to increase compliance by reducing or by uh, increasing the specificity, that means to reduce the number of false positive results uh, uh, to be accepted, we, we want to have tests that are non-invasive, that are user-friendly, that we don't need to prepare the bowel, that we don't need to make any restriction on the diet, or, uh, uh, or uh, yes, at the same time, we need to increase accessibility. I mean that we need that uh, the test should be affordable and widely distributed because the logistics of any screening program is quite complicated. Uh, it, it seems that blood-borne biomarker could be a new way to increase the effectiveness of a screening uh, programs because it is expected or there is some suggestion that a, a, a blood test will be better accepted by the population. We don't know for sure because we, don't never, we have never compared directly uh, uh, blood tests with those using feces but it seems that probably it could be at least a complementary way to increase the, the, the efficacy of colon cancer screening uh, programs. 
the, the, the idea of using uh, blood-borne biomarkers came from this slide that we know that in the carcinogenic process there are many markers that are representing the genetic and the epigenetic alteration of the tumor that could be released to blood and to feces. I mean that if you are able to detect these markers either in the stool or in plasma or sera, we will be able to early detect these uh, uh, lesions. Th that is a field that is quite interesting, but it's not easy to work in it. Uh, we need some biomarkers that uh, target not only cancer, but also the precursor lesion, and that is not easy, especially for a blood test. At the same time, we know that the biological process involved in cancer is not unique. I mean that probably there is not uh, enough of using one single biomarker. We need a panel of markers because that is a heterogeneous process. And we don't know exactly how easy these markers go uh, uh, to blood. And of course, there are also some technical considerations because we are trying to detect a very tiny amount of a marker within the, the blood or the feces. That means that it's not, it's not a, an easy task. Of course, cost is an issue. We have at that moment a very useful test that is fecal immunochemical testing that uh, it has been clearly demonstrated that is effective and cost effective and uh, that is relatively uh, cheap. I mean that uh, that is a, a critical issue for any new markers. Okay, uh, th there are several approaches to, to evaluate uh, uh, biomarkers in blood, but probably the most appealing uh, strategies is looking for DNA methylation patterns, that is a specific molecular event that occurs in most of uh, colon cancer, and also to detect microRNA, that is as are small molecules that are also uh, uh, present in the carcinogenic process of colon cancer. Uh, the, the, the hypothesis behind the, the, the use of this test is that a simple blood test could encourage more people to participate in a, in a screening. The, what, uh, the, the, you know that, uh, in the, the field of methylation markers, there were some preliminary studies that were very exciting. You can see here in this slide that that is uh, just a summary of some of the, the studies that have been published so far, uh, looking for methylation in different uh, uh, markers. You can see that the sensitivity for cancer and adenoma was uh, quite impressive, 80 uh, percent, 60 percent, 55, 75. That is uh, uh, quite a lot. But however, when the the, the most uh, well-studied marker, that is 79, was evaluated in a very good study, that is the precept study that involved more than 1,500 individuals, the results were some, uh, somehow disappointing. You can see here that instead of finding uh, uh, sensitivity for cancer that was in the range of 70 or 80 percent. Here the sensitivity was about 50 percent that could increase a little bit using some technical uh, uh, modification. But probably the most disappointing figure of using this biomarker is in the left part of the, of the slide that you can see that for early cancer, stage 1 to 3, sensitivity was lo less than uh, 50 percent. That is the, the reason that uh, uh, we and many other groups in the world were trying to look for new biomarkers more sensitive and more specific than the, the one that we have at that moment. And we are working in these molecules that we call microRNA, that is short RNA molecules that are involved in many processes, uh, especially those that are uh, uh, participating or are involved in, the, in colon cancer and in, the, 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 in other uh, uh, cancers as well. We know that these uh, molecules are regulating different processes that are involved also in normal uh, cells. And uh, what is the reason or what is the potential advantages of using uh, microRNA? Well, we, we uh, know for different studies that microRNA expression can discriminate between different types of tumors and even in, uh, in colon cancer we can distinguish different types of colon cancer because of different molecular uh, 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 condition, we know that a modest number of microRNA can regulate different processes. I mean that 
looking for a, a reduced number of microRNA could be enough to have a whole picture of what is happening in a, in a uh, uh, cancer cell. But specifically for uh, uh, colon cancer screening, there are two potential advantages of using microRNA. One is that microRNA dysregulation or alteration is an early event. I mean that not only happen in advanced colon cancer, but also occur in early stages and even in, a, in uh, advanced adenoma that was the, the precursor lesion. And uh, 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 in comparison with other tests that have been uh, proved many years ago, uh, microarrays are very stable in different biological fluids. That means that uh, it seems potentially is a, is a good marker uh, to look for in, in blood. Uh, and actually, there are several studies. I, I, I bring to you one that is uh, uh, done uh, in our laboratory that doing a, a discovery and validation process, we were able to identify a panel of three uh, microRNA that has a pretty good uh, uh, performance. It's a, an accurate test that works both in uh, early cancer and advanced cancer. And it uh, has an additional advantage that it works similarly in the right colon and in the left colon, that even though that is a very specific technical uh, thing, uh, uh, I have to mention that always it's much more difficult to find lesion in the right colon than in the left for many uh, different uh, regions. That means that uh, that is a preliminary study, of course, that is not a test that is ready to be in the market, but I think that is a way that we can uh, continue working to look for this kind uh, of marker. As a summary, uh, micro uh, biomarker-based screening may improve colorectal cancer uh, prevention, and it seems that blood tests, even though at that moment the sensitivity is, is quite low, uh, it seems that promotes a better compliance. That means that uh, it is a way that we should continue working in order to look for different approaches that could, uh, uh, could complement the, the approach that we have at that moment.